Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. What a delight it is to be with you here once again at Bible Tract Echoes. And by the way, if this happens to be your very first time to be listening to the broadcast, I say a very special welcome to you. We do two things here. We study the Word of God, and we encourage each other who know Christ to tell the gospel to those who do not. To that end, right now, let me encourage you to get your Bible, if possible, and join me as my Bible sits open to Leviticus chapter 9. Leviticus chapter Chapter 9. Right now, we're walking through the book of Leviticus, taking a chapter per broadcast. I'm going to give an outline today as I typically do, so why not get something on which you can jot some notes? Also, along the way, I'm going to be encouraging you to get some gospel tracts from us. A gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. There are These are an evangelism tool. I want to put a free sample packet into your hand. Did you hear me? I said free. <laughs> Let me do that. Have pen and paper ready when our contact information is given at the end of the broadcast. My title for Leviticus chapter 9 is this, And God Came to Church. And God came to church. Now, friend, there have been all kinds of times when I, as a pastor of a church for those 30 years that I pastored, that we had church services that were good, but they were, frankly, quite ordinary. It wasn't the problem with the preacher or the people. I think that, for the most part, worship times ought to be uplifting and challenging, but there is a sameness, a similarness to them. But there have been times, those few times, when services were anything but normal. There was an air of expectancy in the presence of God and the moving of God through his word. And people's lives were touched at a deep soul level. And many left the service altered in their walk with Christ. And people came to Christ as Savior. We often called those unique days this, days when God showed up for church. Well, here in Leviticus 9, the priesthood had been sanctified for seven days, and now the priestly ministry was to begin, and Moses basically says this, guys, if you'll do this service right, God will show up. And guess what? God showed up. Get your Bible, Leviticus chapter 9, and get something on which you can jot some notes, please. I mentioned the gospel tracts here a moment ago. I have here one of our gospel tracts. This is probably one of our more unique ones. It's titled, Do You Know For Sure? Do You Know For Sure? This is a small booklet-style gospel tract. It's four inches wide, two inches to oh, really almost three inches tall. And this is a tremendous, clear gospel track, particularly for those who are involved in a religious group where a human priest must be sought for any spiritual blessing to be given. This gospel track, Do You Know For Sure?, lays out with such clarity, and the Bible verses are here given in such a way that it makes the gospel clear. There are some unique diagrams in this particular gospel track, but it lays out with clarity that Jesus Christ is the only means by which a person can enter heaven. You got to be born again through the person of Jesus Christ. But it also says that Jesus is the only priest that we need. Do you know for sure? Tremendous track. Please get it from us. At the end of the program, my announcer will give you three ways by which you can give to us your name and mailing address, have pen and paper ready, Or you can go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. And remember that word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S, BibleTracksInc.org. And you can get that sample packet through that website. 
If your Bible's open to Leviticus chapter 9, the opening three verses say this, And it came to pass on the eighth day that Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel, and he said unto Aaron, Take thee a young calf for a sin offering, and a ram for a burnt offering, without blemish, and offer before the Lord. And unto the children of Israel thou shalt speak, saying, Take ye a kid of the goats for a sin offering, and a calf and a lamb, both of the first year, without blemish, for a burnt offering. Go to verse 5. Verse 5 begins this way, And they brought that which Moses commanded. Now go to verse 6. And Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do, and notice now the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. Let's go to the end of the chapter, verse 23. And Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of the congregation and came out and blessed the people, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the people. And there came a fire out from before the Lord and consumed upon the altar the burnt offering and the fat, and we'll stop right there. Now, friend, that was quite a worship service. I'll pretty much guarantee that everybody talked about that service for a number of days afterward. In chapter 8 of Leviticus, Aaron and his four sons were ordained to the priesthood. They then, at the end of chapter 8, had to spend seven days together at the tabernacle. Now, chapter 9, verse 1, on day number 8, their work as priests was to begin. And upon that point that Moses, up to that point, Moses had been both the commander of the people and the spiritual leader of Israel. Now the spiritual role was going to be handed off to Aaron and the priesthood. Where beforehand only Moses could go into the tabernacle, now Moses and Aaron both can go into the tabernacle, and God is pleased with all this. I've divided chapter 9 into three parts. Each part has a key word beginning with the letter C. Let me give them to you here. Part number 1, verses 1 through 7, I call this the collecting of the nation. The collecting of the nation at the tabernacle, the group is brought there. Part number two, verses eight to 22, is the cleansing of the nation, the cleansing of the nation. In these verses, sacrifices are offered, first for the priests themselves and then for the congregation as a whole, first for the priests, then for the people. Two kinds of offering are made. Both parties needed a sin offering and a consecration offering, called here a burnt offering. The third part takes up those last two verses, verses 23 and 24. This I've titled, The Coming of God to the Tabernacle. The Coming of God to the Tabernacle. Because the worship of the people was right, God came. And needless to say, this was a red letter day of worship at the house of God. For time's sake, let me focus first and primarily on verses 1 through 7, this section I call the collecting of the nation. If you are taking notes, jot down three words beginning with the letter D, like in the word David. First of all, the word is details, details. Look at verses 1 through 4. The details are given there. Moses told the priests and the people the details that were required by God for their worship on that day. The details were two things, as I said before. Number one, a right sin offering. And number two, a right consecration offering. My second D word is the word deliberateness. I read the opening part, the opening phrase of verse 5. Both the five priests, Aaron and his four sons, and all the people deliberately acted to bring the right offerings to the worship service. May I throw a personal comment in here? You and I can go so easily to a worship service and go without a sense of deliberateness. Thoughtful actions on our part, I think, are often what hinders the sense of the presence of God. There needs to be a fresh deliberateness, a healthy dose of deliberateness in our worships. Amen? 
All right. I've talked about the details in verses 1 to 4. I've talked about the deliberateness in verse 5. Now, my third D word is the word design based upon verse 6. Look at verse 6 again. Let me read it again. It says, and Moses said, this is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do. And notice the promise and the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. Let me begin here with a word of caution. This statement was made by Moses to the Jews at that particular time in their national life. What happened here was not stated as a normative event even for them. Fire did not fall from heaven every Sabbath day when the Jews worshipped. But what I am saying is this, God gave details to be carried out because it was the design of God for him to worship with his people. We are living in the dispensation of the church, of the church age. We are not in the Old Testament economy. The New Testament church is a distinct group from the Old Testament Jews. Oh, there were are Jews in the church today, and there were Gentiles that became part of Israel in the Old Testament. So we cannot take, all I'm saying is we cannot take verse 6 as a carryover verse for our worship times. But the principle I'm pulling out here is this. When the people of God of any era come together for worship with deliberate obedience and deliberately bringing to God God's planned sacrifices, God will meet with those people. Listener, friend, you may be a churchgoer, but are you going to worship with the right sacrifices? You need two of them, according to Leviticus 7. You need a sin sacrifice, and you need a consecration sacrifice. A sin sacrifice is one you bring that says, on the basis of the sacrifice, my sins are clean. I am a clean worship before God. The sin stain is off of my soul. There is only one sin offering. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He came to give his life a ransom so that he, we through him, might be saved. He is the only one through his shed blood that can be the the sin offering that brings God and allows us to come to God. Friend, you and I as sinners are away from God. We're enemies of God, but there is a way to be reconciled. It's through the shed blood of Calvary's cross. Christ died on the cross, was buried and rose again, that we through him might be saved. He is our sin sacrifice. But when we come to worship, we need a second sacrifice, a consecration sacrifice. That's that Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. We are putting ourselves on the altar saying, God, I'm all yours. Live out your life through my skin. That is a consecration offering that is so desperately needed in every era. Dear listener friend, if you do not know Christ as your Savior, as your sin offering, you need to receive him today. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.